Greetings everyone, I'm Lori Radke, President and CEO of the Greater Green Bay Chamber. At the Chamber, we are committed to providing our members with resources that give you insight, knowledge, and information about our fantastic community. As part of this commitment, we are introducing our first Collective Impact Magazine, Community Conversation. In this and in future conversations, I will engage with community members that are making a difference in Greater Green Bay. A summary of these discussions will appear in the pages of the Collective Impact Magazine each quarter. Additionally, each discussion will be available online, allowing you to take time to explore more of the conversation that I just had. I invite you to grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join me in learning more about our community. See you soon. I'm Lori Radke, President and CEO of the Greater Green Bay Chamber, and it's such an honor for me to have you joining us, County Executive Streckenbach, and really for me to sit down and have this conversation with you is just really special. I've been in my role for 10 and a half years, and you and your um, the whole county has been such a partner and supportive of the work that we're trying to do here on behalf of the community, uh, much like what you've been doing in your leadership for the last decade or so. So um, thank you again for being here and for your support and your partnership. And excited to have this type of conversation with you and we'll see where it goes. So thank you again. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity, Lori. And as you mentioned, the, the partnership between the county uh, in the chamber has been very strong over the years. Uh, our, our working relationship in terms of being colleagues and really working on some of the bigger issues that are impacting our county and our economy has been a strong partnership. And ultimately in the end, uh, it requires all of us kind of working together. And I think that's what makes the strength of your, the, the, the Greater Green Bay's uh, strategic plan, you know, where you have a lot of people that are, you know, behind a project that allows us to really kind of center our energies uh, on a on a common goal. So appreciate the partnership and look forward to having uh, that ongoing partnership and and having this discussion with you today. So thank you for the invite. Wonderful. I'd like to start out with talking about COVID, right? I know we've been hearing about COVID and, and some people might say um, that's all we hear about, but I think it's important that we start out and talk about that and talk about how Brown County has stepped up in a time of such great you know, uncertainty. I mean, when we look back 18 months or even longer, and I would just like to ask, you know, what have you learned um, through this process? I think from the county level, but even from your leadership level, if you could share that with us, that would be great. Yeah, so Lori, I think uh, all organizations uh, across the board, whether you're uh, in government or if you're in a nonprofit or in the public sector or the private sector, you we all kind of had to do a quick pivot uh an immediate inventory of our capabilities and then uh try to uh figure out how you're going to deliver services now in brown county's situation uh, we run a number of 24 7 operations when people call 911 they expect to be able to answer you know someone on the other line so that they can tell them about their emergency uh, when we have inclement weather or there's an, a, a danger or an accident on a highway system, people expect our public works department or highway shop to be out there to you know, uh, improve the situation so that the traveling public can travel. And so from our perspective, we being a very diverse organization, we had to pivot immediately to make sure that we could continue to provide the services that the residents of Brown County and the people who visit our county expect. And so we were very fortunate that one, we have a strong IT department and two, that we had already started prior to COVID to pilot uh, telework and uh, offering remote work uh, to certain uh, departments. And so we had already started to begin having the policies in place. We worked on what type of technology would be required at the home. And we were actually able to, you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, uh, push the button and immediately within 24 hours have almost 900 of our employees working remotely. And we were able to, with the minor modifications and disruptions to general public, we were able to do the services of the public. So that to me was probably one of the most uh, glaring uh, aspects that we were able to pivot in a time turnaround time frame because luckily we had a lot of people talking about some of the 
uh, things in, in prior to COVID hitting, we were in a better position to kind of uh, adapt to that situation. So I, I would say that was uh, pretty uh, amazing for all intents and purposes uh, that we were able to continue to divide, provide for critical services. The second thing that as we see disruption um, happening across industries, uh, you know, you see that happen in the food industry. You see it with the the uh, now people buy stuff without showing up at the retail store. They can just click and it appears in their at their house. Forty eight hours later, what we, what we found is part of this process that we were actually able to be very productive and efficient in delivering services while remote. And so, what we are going to be doing is as we look at our county footprint and we look at today's new uh, expectations from employees, we will be very similar to what the private sector is doing is offering hybrid uh, uh, opportunities for employees to work both at home and at, at, you know, on the site. And so as we look at some of those reconfigurations, we call them the hotel suites where employee can plug in and then plug out. Uh, and so from that standpoint, looking beyond uh, COVID, I think our organization is going to be able to uh, provide and adapt to the future technologies and the disruptions that are happening uh, in terms of how we deliver services into the future. So I think with all the negative aspects that COVID brought, and we could spend a whole uh, day on just discussing of the devastations that has been caused, if I'm looking at it from a business standpoint or a positive aspect, I think those are two very positive things that came from the, from COVID. That was just really a great insight. I think so many times we forget about all the services that the county provides for us, right? We wake up and we just expect it to be there, just like turning on a light switch. You just take those for granted. And so having an insight to really what you had to do and pivot um, when we were all trying to figure out our own world, really appreciate that those critical services were able to be uh, pivoted and available uh, at a great time of need. So thank you for that. Let's talk about the Resh Expo. I mean, what a beautiful facility and what a catalyst for economic development and tourism and what a great addition to our community. Could you give us an update on the Resh Center? So- uh, Or Resh Expo, I should say. Yeah, so there, you know, there's definitely distinctions. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and the I would just say first and foremost, uh, kudos to Myron Construction, uh, Kaylor Slater and all the partners that helped bring that project on time and on budget. Uh, it was a $93 million project. It was supported by the community. Chamber, of course, was a strong supporter along with the Green Bay Packers. Uh, it, it really is amazing because right now PMI, who is our contracted uh, vendor to run uh, the expo for the county is booking things into 2027 already. And what they're hearing is people are just amazed on not only the beauty of the building itself, but how well it really accommodates today's expectations for the future uh, expos that are going to be taken to trade shows. And so from that standpoint, uh, I think when we look at the bigger uh, piece of the economic aspect of this, I think the Rush Expo initially was expected that it was going to bring in, you know, roughly $13 million annually uh, to, you know, the overall economy from its events that it, that it holds. Uh, I see in 2027 that number being, you know, much higher than that. And uh, if it had not been for COVID, which is creating some, you know, um, some challenges, of course, you know, right now, not a lot of people are holding in-person events, but overall, Lori, I think this is a, you know, when we, when we discussed this project, we wanted to complement the Lombardi Avenue corridor. We wanted to make sure that what we did on this corner really complemented what you saw with the Green Bay Packers in their development of the Titletown district the uh, respect that the community has taken with the Lambeau field and making that a destination spot. So I would say that working with the village of Ashwaubenon, 
uh, the room tax commission, the community, the county, we really, uh, I think I would, I'd love to say that we just knocked it out of the park. And from an economic development standpoint, I think this complements that whole corridor. It makes it into a tourist destination. And instead of having those disposable dollars driving by us, we can continue to create reasons for people to want to stop here, spend some time, uh, and ultimately uh, enjoy what this community has to offer. It definitely is a destination and it's absolutely beautiful. And I just, every time I'm in there, I'm in awe, just knowing how far we've come and how we put our face forward for the world to see what we have here. So it's just, it's amazing even when you name off all the individuals that had to come together to make that happen. And it speaks volumes to not only your leadership, but really our community and how we come together uh, to execute on things that are important to our community. Yeah, that's, you know, if you think about it, it's been almost a 30 year uh, in progress uh, pro uh, project and it, it really required the community to come together. And again, your strategic plan that, that you know, the community strategic plan called out that the Rush Expo or the, the arena needed to be addressed and we came together and we were able to get it done. So it's a, another feather in all of our hats in terms of moving the needle and making our community a better place. And as you mentioned, it's really a great um, tool in addition to our toolbox for economic development, and economic impact. And I think another thing I'd like to talk about that has a huge economic impact that a lot of folks really probably don't know about is really the port. And there's just so mm -hmm. much to be had about that and so much uniqueness in that. And could you talk a little bit about the role that the port plays in economic development and the impact to our community? So, I mean, I. It, it, our community was founded on the water uh, and the port uh, to this day still plays a vital role in not only greater Green Bay, Brown County, but the whole region's economy. And so from that standpoint, uh, advocating and growing the port of Green Bay is a critical aspect uh, for our region to be competitive in the, in the long run. When you think about infrastructure and moving inputs and outputs in and out of your market, the most efficient systems generally, um, you know, when you look at the national network system, it, you know, it's flowing, you know, south of us. And so in order for us to be competitive, we, we have to make sure that we're constantly looking at how do we move products in and out of our market. And so the port plays a very vital role for, you know, as I mentioned to you, as far as the UP, to, uh, as far as to WASA, and uh, anytime we're able to improve upon that uh, is in the best interest of, of the region, not just in Brown County. So, Troy, if people were interested in learning more about the port, is there a resource or a place they could go to have a better understanding of the role that the port plays in our community and the economic impact? I know I've seen some pretty unbelievable numbers, and I would just be curious if people wanted to read more about that. So, the, the, of course, they could go to the Port of Green Bay. It's under Brown County uh, uh, website, and they could sign up for a newsletter. There, and they could like them on, on social media where they can get these annual reports or that will talk about some of the impacts that the port has on the general economy. Uh, one of the things that is happening unfolding right now is the port in Brown County purchased the former Polyam site. And that is going to be an economic, economic driver for the economy. And at the same time, uh, working with the city of Green Bay, when we look at the development of waterfront, uh, we may be able to uh, eventually address the coal piles that are south of Mason Street Bridge and develop potentially 10 acres that complements the shipyard development. Uh, and if that all comes together with the negotiations between the city of Green Bay and the Sea Rice Company, uh, we, we, th we think that this is going to be a gigantic economic boom for, you know, the city of Green Bay and Brown County. And again, where the port is very interested in the discussion is where, where are we seeing port growth? Mm -hmm. And by including the mouth of the bay, the former polyam plant, we're adding on additional 40 acres of land for us to bring in raw material. So this is all very good information. It's all great developments. 
we were successful in, in receiving a $500,000 grant from the WEDC, and we appreciate the Chamber's support uh, when we went out to ask the Governor's Office and uh, Secretary Hughes for, for that uh, endorsement. Wonderful. Troy, as we're talking about, you know, assets in Greater Green Bay, I think I think of the airport right away, you know, Austin Strabble International Airport. I mean, what an asset to have in our community. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the airport and really the role that you feel it plays. Certainly you and I have had a lot of conversations and I'm very passionate about the airport and the ability to fly local. Um, I mean, not many people are able to do that. And so the fact that we have that here and uh, we're able to talk about how important that is. Did you wanna share a little bit about the airport? Well, you know, ever since coming in this role, uh, it was, it was put to me very, uh, um, in the end, we're very fortunate to have this airport located in our region. Um, again, this is like the Port of Green Bay. It's not just a Green Bay, Brown County asset. It really is the region's asset. And the ability for us to be able to do business globally requires us to be able to uh, get there in a timely manner. And so by having this asset uh, in Northeast Wisconsin, it allows our businesses uh, to really truly compete globally and to reach markets uh, beyond our borders. And so the key of course is how do we continue as a community to support that airport? Um, what can we do to make sure that it remains being an enterprise fund where it's not receiving local tax dollars to operate, it's really for the most part, self-sufficient. And so anytime that the county partnering up with their business community, the chamber can encourage airlines to bring more direct flights uh, to our area is ultimately a benefit uh, to not only our residents for a recreational standpoint, but really in the end, the business community so that they can continue to get out into the market in a just in time uh, to meet with future clients or business partners uh, and to be able to sell their products from our market uh, into their markets. Uh, so from that standpoint, uh, it's an asset to the community and uh, we truly appreciate, I know Marty Piat, the director out at the airport, truly appreciates the partnership that we have with the area businesses community and the chamber in endorsing and advocating for you know, our, our airport. We've had some amazing meetings with airline uh, uh, individuals, representatives, uh, showcasing what the, what's happening in Brown County in the greater Green Bay area. And you've been great ambassadors uh, for the airport and we really truly appreciate the partnership. And we look forward to continuing the, the you know, success that we've been having. I mean, we've just recently announced destination, you know, direct flights to Tampa, Fort Myers, Fort Lauderdale, Phoenix, Denver. Uh, these are all positive developments. Um, and we look forward to continuing that uh, positive uh, momentum going into 2022 and 2023. And all those announcements come um, even while we're dealing with the pandemic and I've been able to look at, you know, the numbers and we've really held our own through that whole and through the duration um, and how that's negatively impacted flight overall. And I think people really appreciate the ability to fly local and, and time is something that we don't have a lot of. And so rather than commuting or driving, uh, it's right here in our backyard. And so that's such a, an asset to have. And when we talk about talent, airport does come up in the discussion, right? People want to know where the direct flights are, and especially when we're recruiting new talent into the area. And when I think about talent, I remember even 10 years ago, you and I sitting down and talking about brain drain and talent and where are we headed in the next 10, 15, 20 years. And you're a visionary. And I know that you had a lot of really great thoughts even back then about what we need to do as a region to start having these critical discussions about talent and retaining our talent, attracting talent. Do you want to share a little bit with with the community about your thought and really some things that you've been able to bring forward in that vision? Well, I would just say that uh, the collective thought was around that communities that are able to attract uh, people or have positive uh, population growth are going to be the communities of the future that are gonna be successful. 
And I would just say that collectively working with a number of people, we realized quickly that the communities that were seeing success in population growth, business startups, uh, there was a reoccurring theme uh, that was happening in those communities. One, uh, they uh, very, were very technical. They had the infrastructure of fiber into the community broadband, was available for business startups and it was at a competitive rate, meaning it didn't cost, uh, you know, a thousand dollars per month to be able to have a gigabyte of bandwidth. Second thing was, and more prominently, was really the partnership between the private sector and the university and research. And so I would just say that we, as a community, really worked on how do we take our university, which not too far uh, ago had an enrollment below 7,000 people, yet we're the third largest city, the fourth largest county, that university should have had enrollment numbers much higher in that 15 to 20,000 uh, in, in enrollment numbers. And why that's important, Lori, is University of Wisconsin Green Bay has a retention rate of just below 80%. So for every thousand individ individuals that are coming to this school, that's roughly 800 new employees that are gonna be available to the region. And so that is about brain gain versus the brain drain that we've been experiencing so for so long. So finding ways that we can partner and encourage growth at the university has really been something that not only myself, uh, the council of trustees, the chamber strategic plan, the community as a whole really got behind. And because of that, we were able to uh, convince the state of Wisconsin, the university system, the, the Brown County Board of Supervisors to build a STEM innovation center. And more importantly, we were able to get an engineering school uh, at the university and they've increased their enrollments. They're now uh, surpassing 10,000. Now it wasn't just that, that reason, but it's a positive development that's taking place at that university. We have now 3,000 more students available that are graduating from our university, which relates to roughly 2,400 new students that are gonna be able to for our workforce. What's the number one thing we hear? What, what is talent, right? Absolutely. So this is a this is a great long term strategy in terms of talent recruitment and development. The retention, of course, comes down to what are our employers doing to be competitive, and what are they of uh, uh, providing to their employees. County government, of course, has and municipal government have a big role in this as well. What quality of life things are we doing? You know, we have the reforestation camp, our parks, the Neville Public Museum, all these quality of life things that we're trying to uh, provide for that give reasons for people to want to live here. So I think in that small piece of the puzzle, uh, I think the community as a whole have really stepped up to support our university and more importantly, really be strategic in that workforce pipeline, right? So the STEM Innovation Center, we know that there's gonna be about 15% growth in STEM related fields. So when people are getting educated at our university, we wanna make sure that they're getting educated in the, fuse, the fields that our employers are most in demand for. So uh, I think it's a great recipe. I think we've, we've accomplished a lot and love to you know, look forward to seeing what the next 10 years bring. Absolutely. All great news when they're the fastest growing university in the state, too. I mean, that's just wonderful to know that we're all headed in the right direction and supporting uh, the University of Green Bay. So, um, Troy, let's talk a little bit about collaboration. I think we talked a little bit early on about the community coming together and how we're able to get things done and move forward. In your leadership role in the past 10 years, talk about how the community comes together and what you think makes Brown County unique as we do join together to move initiatives forward. Well, I'm gonna to try to be brief on this, but I think this is such an important piece of the puzzle. Um, I would say this, Lori, when I first came into office, the view of government, both at a municipal level and at the county level was 
uh, I would just say dysfunctional. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it had a very positive uh, outlook from the business community and the general public in terms of just the, the fighting and the, the inability to get things done or to move the needle uh, on major developments. And awful, you know, oftentimes you hear that you know, because of our inability to get things done or our infighting, uh, you know, a lot of projects or developments move to other areas. I would say that one of the key things of the success of this community in the last decade has been the willingness for individuals to work together, to be united, to recognize that in order for us to get things done, we had to set aside uh, some of our differences and agree to move forward on some projects. And, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I mean, I've been very fortunate and very lucky to be in county government at a time where I think the public was ready for leadership, uh, government, the private sector to start to show that we are going to start working together and working for the people and getting things done. And if you look at the progress of this community from you know, in the last 10 years, we've moved mountains. We're, we're doing things right now that people have been walk, talking about I mean, so talk about the Rush Expo, you talk about the engineering school, and something that we haven't talked about uh, is the Southern Bridge. These are three, just three projects that have been talked about for decades. And yet, because of the politics or the funding or whatever, the stars weren't aligned. Today, the stars are aligned. Uh, relationships are very important. Understanding that a united front in leveraging uh, resources from the state and federal government, it's critical for us to be working together. And I would just say that because of your own leadership at the chamber, uh, working with uh, the county and the private sector, we've been able to really move uh, some developments forward that quite frankly have been talked about, but really never got off the ground. And so I would just say this, uh, my strength and some of the success that has been happening during my time as a county executive is purely because we as a community have been able to come together united as a group and saying these are things that we're going to get done and we're going to move the needle and we work towards those efforts and we've been successful it's been it's been a great uh, partnership. Hearing you just name a few of those initiatives that have been talked about 10, 20, even 30 years and, and where they're at, you know, moving forward right now is really exciting. As we look to the next 10 years, um, what would you say are some of the big projects or are there any other ones that you're saying, okay, I'm going to put this out in front now because the timing is right. Things are aligned. We have people wanting to come together and move things forward. So let's move ahead 10 years. What do you see for Brown County? So I mean, if I'm if I'm taking off of just if I'm not looking at just Brown County government, and I'm looking at the community and looking at some of the initiatives that we are trying to benefit the overall economy of Brown County and the quality of life, some things that I would just say that would be in my radar: uh, enrollment at the university would be surpassing fifteen thousand, closing in on twenty thousand students. In order for that to happen, that's a huge lift. Uh, but I think we can we can get there. Uh, the graduation rates of our school districts are pushing closer to 99%. Uh, now, I know that that's a, a, a very large goal, but focusing on a lot of the things that the Chamber is partnership in, Chief Brown County to some of the other things like through our PALS program, Leadership Green Bay, all of these things can uh, hopefully help individual students uh, achieve their dreams and their goals and find, um, you know, graduation. <clears throat> the bridge to be built, uh, the Southern Bridge. Now, we've accomplished one of the most amazing pieces in, through the state and of uh, getting the interchange and the Federal Highway Administration telling us where the bridge can ultimately go, because that's been, a, you know, in discussion for 20 years. We now know where it's going to go. Uh, we have an interchange. That's going to be built hopefully starting in 2025. The next 
big piece, of course, is then building the actual bridge going over uh, the Fox River. That's going to take, again, a, a big push, a uh, united front of the community to get that project done. So having that done in the next decade, I think, is going to be a major accomplishment uh, for Brown County. Our continuous uh, uh, getting closer to Waukesha's uh, numbers in, ter in terms of total tourism spend. A lot of the projects that we built here, Lori, are are being built like the Rush Expo, the Rush Center, the KI is being built with room tax dollars. And so it's really critical for us uh, to continue to have reasons for people to come here. So to for us to be able to encroach on Waukesha's total tourism spend is a benefit to this community because that means our hotels are filled. That means our economy is benefiting from it. Uh, and overall, the, the success of our community is growing. So that's to me a, another one of those bigger than just Brown County government. Uh, and in the end, I, I would just say that between workforce development, continuously seeing our overall valuation of our county growing, these are all small but very large improvements. Um, and you know, I'm really excited to see what comes out of the urban hub. Uh, you know, as we looked at what Brown County was trying to do back in 2015, 2016, by bringing the first gigabyte parks into our region to kind of say, hey, businesses, you can do business in Brown County with the bandwidth of a gigabyte of up and down speeds. Uh, and one of the first locations was uh, the Rail Yard Innovation District. The chamber has planted itself there, created the urban hub, is starting up all these small businesses and creating uh, avenues for startup businesses to take place. To me, in 10 years, Lori, it would be fascinating to see some of the startups that graduate out of that space and ultimately make roots here in that whole evolution of a business cycle starts over. And we now have a new employer who started their roots here and is going to grow in our community. That to me is a beautiful, uh, um, something that would be great to see happen out of that space. And all of us had a small piece of the puzzle, right? County infrastructure, chamber is the business side resources from the banks that you have all those partners inside there to help these individuals um, ensure their business and incubate it. To me, it, that, that in 10 years, seeing companies spur out of that to me would be a, a wonderful story. A lot of great things happen in Brown County. That's a great vision and county executive I'm in 110% and it's doable and I have the same vision. So um, I look forward to swinging by your house and picking you up and driving over the bridge with you too when that's built. So we can do that together. So county executive Streichenbach, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I also want to thank you for your partnership and your support and you're just a pleasure to work with and I look forward to continuing our partnership and doing great things for the community. So thank you. Thank you.